So I recently did a video on my normal bracelets. I showed you bracelets from way back in like 2009, 2010, all the way through the middle and until more recently. And I showed you how my bracelets progressed throughout the years and how my knotting style changed. Today I'm gonna do the same thing, but with alpha bracelets. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find that many of my older alpha bracelets. I definitely know that I did many because I remember doing many, but I have no idea where they are. I don't know if I gave them away to someone or what happened? I have no idea. The one thing that I can say, I know that one of my very early works is currently in Miami where my grandma lives. And the reason for that is because I gave it to her. If you watch my video titled Common Beginner Mistake, you'll be able to see that bracelet in huge detail. That bracelet is from, I would say 2010, I think. So I'll leave that linked in the card in the description. It's a video that goes over common beginner mistakes um, with that bracelet as the example, essentially. But I did find some, <laughs> so I thought I would talk about them. So first up, we have this bracelet, which I have no idea what the pattern is, but this is a very early work of mine. And the one thing that you can notice straight away is that it's very floppy, which my bracelets nowadays, they cannot do this. They, they, they cannot flop. This can flop. My, my bracelets now, they can't flop. And that's because the way my knots are made now is very different. My knot tension has changed completely. But a few other features of note. <laughs> the loop that I did here is like a Chinese staircase and um, the string just comes off of it which is lovely. Now, I didn't discover the flat alpha technique until very recently, and I'll get to that in uh, a few bracelets from now. You might know that I have two separate alpha tutorials on my channel right now. The first one, I don't stand by anymore, and I have that. I didn't delete it because, I don't know, should I? <laughs> I didn't delete it, but I did leave in like all the comments and everything, uh, and, and I link to uh, my newer tutorial, which I, which I think is much better. The main reason for it being with the flat alpha technique, you're actually linking all of your bracelet structure together. So because in the flat alpha technique, you are threading through the previous color, through the new knot, you're sort of making your entire bracelet like one cohesive piece, whereas, in the way that I did my bracelets before then, as I showed in the first alpha tutorial that I did, I didn't do that. I just switched the colors. Like I put one in the back and then I brought the new one in straight away without tying them together in any way. And so that resulted in basically the base strings being separate entities. They aren't really connected together. Like when you have big chunks of like vertical lines, like here, so you have like a vertical line here and a vertical line here for the edges. They are completely separate. Like they, you can, there you go. There's like a hole there. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a literal hole there. The strings are separate entities. They're not tied together, which is why the bracelet sort of contracts here as well. And that's not good. <laughs> but also the, the bracelet sort of widens and contracts at random points. It's very, very bumpy. Here we've got another point where this is like basically a straight line and you can literally just see that the bracelet separates here because it's not linked together because I'm not using the flat alpha technique. But all in all, I really like this bracelet. I also did Chinese staircases for the ties, which is kind of weird. I never did that after this. I don't know why I did that here. And this is what the back looks like. It's just a normal alpha background. This was, as I said, I think 2010. Then we have a giant skip. If I remember correctly, this is 2013. I don't have any bracelets in between that period, but we've got this one. I was still using the same technique, not the flat alpha, so still the bracelet is kind of separate. You can see here, there's sort of like a straight line here. It's kind of bumpy, like you can push it out and separate those strings. But I really love this keychain. It's the same thing on both sides. And if you ask me what my favorite pattern is, I'll probably say this one because I really, really like it. This, this keychain is very sort of sentimental to me. I don't know, I, really, I just love this. This is probably my favorite of all time. I'm considering remaking it. I really, really love this keychain. I think it's really cute. And it was also my first keychain, but you can still see that this is a little bit floppy. Same year, I think, but just later on, my knotting style completely changed. This, like you can hear, that's so hard. Compare it to this floppy one. This is like hard as a brick. You can't flop it at all. It just sort of wobbles and it's really hard. Like you can't pull it apart at all in any of the places. It's just very stiff. But yeah, this bracelet is also very special to me. It's more of a bookmark really than a bracelet, but this is also really special to me because this is actually the day that uh, Stefan and I started dating, which the anniversary for this was just uh, about a week ago. It's been eight years since we started dating, which is a long time. <laughs> uh, we've only been married for a year and a half, but we were dating for eight years. And yeah, this is a really special bracelet for me. But you can see that this is very stiff and you can also see how it wobbles. Like it goes really thin here and then it sort of fattens up here and just the dimensions of it are really weird and then it's also not flat at all. It sort of goes in bumps, it sticks out 
in weird places. Like you can actually see that it goes up and then down here. And I think that's mostly to do with my knot tension, both with the widening and the contracting and the bumpiness of it overall. I think that's all to do with my knot tension. I was tying my knots super tightly during this period and I only very recently figured out how not to do that. We'll get to that. Another bracelet from pretty much the same time period with the exact same issues. It widens and contracts at random points. We've got this nose here sticking out entirely and then it's also very bumpy. Now the bumpiness is a combination of issues. The bumpiness is an issue with the fact that I'm not using the flat alpha technique so the strings are getting like pushed out by one another when I'm doing the color switch but also the fact that I'm tying my knots super tightly here. This is also like a very stiff bracelet of mine. And so by learning how to do the flat alpha technique and by loosening up my knots, I was able to finally get a nice, neat, clean alpha, but I'll get to that. This bracelet is super cute. This is Frankie from One Piece. When we just started dating, Stefan was really into One Piece, so I made uh, a Frankie bracelet for him. I say just, this was about a year into our relationship, but still. <laughs> All right, and then we have this massive time jump. This is 2018. This is when I filmed my first alpha tutorial. This is the bracelet that I used. It's super bumpy. And you also have these bumps on the sides because I wasn't using the straight edge technique for the alpha bracelets. We've got the bumpiness on the edges as well. Overall, I love this bracelet. It's sort of become, I don't know, it's like an iconic bracelet for me because it like reminds me of um, the roots of my channel, I guess. I like this one a lot. And then that same year I made this bracelet, which I think is, all things considered, pretty straight. Despite the fact that I am still switching the colors as I did um, in that tutorial, and I have not yet learned the flat alpha technique here, it's still pretty straight and it looks pretty good. I did a Not With Me video on this. It was one of the very first Not With Me videos that I ever did back in 2018. I find it quite cringy now, but you can watch it if you want to. And then I went into a phase where I didn't make alphas for a very long time. And when I went back to them, I sort of went through an alpha regression. Like you could see that that last bracelet was pretty straight, all things considered. And the space alpha one was also pretty straight. And I went through an alpha regression and I just forgot how to make them, I guess. So this one I made last year, 2019. I did a Not With Me video for this as well, which you can also watch if you want to. And you can see how wonky this is, right? Like it's really bad. It has a giant curve to it. It starts off like if it was going straight, it would have ended up like here, right? It has this giant curve to it. It starts off really thin and then it becomes really thick by the end of it. It's just, it's messy. It's a lot is happening here. It's messy. And again, pretty much the same things were really causing the issues here. The fact that my, this is still very stiff. Like you can, it's very stiff. Can't pull it apart at all. All the knots are very tight together. I don't think I was using the flat alpha technique here yet, but I think the main thing, apart from the fact that I was tying my knots too tightly, the main thing that was causing the issue here is was because I was using strings that had very different thickness. The base strings themselves were one thickness. Leading string for the background was a completely different thickness. The white string and the dark blue strings were completely different thicknesses. And so because of that, the bracelet just really widens when I introduce the more wider string. And so, yeah it resulted in a few issues. <laughs> then finally we have this bracelet, which is finally when I figured out the flat alpha technique. I realized that it exists, I don't remember how, but I found it somehow. I filmed a video on this topic, recreating the bracelet that I did for my original alpha tutorial. I made it with the flat alpha technique, which resulted in a nice clean bracelet that is very straight, very flat. There's no bumpiness to it at all. And overall, I just love the way that it looks. It's still very stiff, you can't pull it apart anywhere. The knots are very close together, but because all of the strings were the same thickness, it didn't really result in many issues here. And now finally we're getting into like some super recent territory. This was something that I made last month and I love it. I think it's really cute, but you can still see there are some issues with it. It goes in very sort of tight together here and then it widens at the end. There's a curve to it near the end. There's a bumpiness to it. I don't know if you can tell, but just trust me, there is a bumpiness to it. And I was thinking, why is there a bump to it if I'm using the flat alpha technique? And it's because on the other side, we've got string that's going across and it's just pulling on that bracelet, pulling it together. And that's resulting in that bump that we see. So once I made that thing, which I can't really call a bracelet, I started really thinking hard about, about what I can do to improve my alpha bracelets. And I started working on my knot tension. I started to release the tension in my knots because I've been tying my knots so tightly for so many years. I think that was the main issue really that was causing my bracelets to look weird 
No matter how many techniques you learn, the straight edge technique, the flat alpha technique, whatever you do, the real reason, the real thing that can improve your bracelets more than anything is just practice. So I started practicing loosening up my knots and I started making my knots very, very lightly and then only when I do the color switch I started really pulling on my knots because when you do the color switch you're inserting a new string within that knot so it is gonna be bigger and by tightening that knot specifically you sort of even it out with all of the other ones. And basically the first time that I tried this I got it spot on. I started releasing the tension in my knots, my knots became a little bit bigger but they became so much looser. Like I can actually fold this bracelet now. Like it kind of wobbles. You can see that I really loosened up the tension here. I can sort of even pull it apart in places. I don't want to do that because I actually pull it apart too much, but I can do that. It's very, very loose now. The knots are very loose and you can tell that that really had an impact. The bracelet itself is pretty straight and it's overall very neat. All of my knots here are horizontal. None of them widen, none of them curve or do a weird wiggle. Everything is very consistent and I love it. So yeah, those are a few of my bracelets throughout the years. The main takeaway I can give you from this video is that practice is good. That's basically the main thing that's really gonna improve your bracelet. Practice, practice, and practice. And what I found that helps my elf bracelets be straight and neat, loosening up my knots a little bit, but keeping them consistent overall, tightening them when I do the color switch to keep them consistent overall. The flat alpha method, I love, I swear by it, it's amazing. I prefer the straight edge technique as well so that my edges are straight, but that's genuinely like a preference thing. Some people like the bumpiness of alphas. But another important thing is using strings that produce the same size knots. The strings don't have to be the same thickness exactly, although that is preferable, but they do have to produce the same size knots so your knots are consistent. The sizing of your knots is probably the most important thing when it comes to alphas because we want to keep those horizontal lines horizontal and the same width and the size of your knots changes both of that. It changes the length, so the horizontalness. If some of your knots are really big and then some of your knots are really small, the next row is not gonna be horizontal, it's gonna go up to where the small knots were, and then it also affects the width because obviously if your knots are bigger, it's gonna be wider. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something, maybe. If you found a pattern that you like and you wanna make it, check out the description. I will try to link to all of them if I find them. I wanna give a special shout out to my Patreons and especially my top supporters whose names are gonna appear on screen. Thank you guys very much for your donations. I really do appreciate it. And if you also want to become a patron, there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks for your donations, like gift packages every other month with like bracelet materials and stuff, and as well as other perks. I've also recently started streaming on Twitch, so you should follow me on there to get notified whenever I go live. And finally, before you go, I would love it if you would consider subscribing since we're getting quite close to 100K and that would be an awesome number to hit. But regardless, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.